Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Think on these things. Today, I'm thinking about life. A baby is born, grows up and goes to school and later graduates college and enters a profession. And several years later, that person dies. Just spend some moments with me as I ponder on this business of life. So we have heard that a friend of ours has died, a close friend. We're shocked at the news, but some of us are really sad. Our friend is gone. The family plans a funeral, and depending on who has died, there might be a large or a small funeral service. There's the burial, much crying and sadness, and when that purse, that part is over, we return to our regular life. That's it. There has to be more to it than that. And there is. The Bible says that each of us has an appointment with death and that after death, there is the judgment. So our friend who we just buried painfully is going to face a judgment. Talk to me about life, your life. How are you living and what do you expect at the end of this life? Listen to Psalm 1 and then we will come back to our reasoning. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields, yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the, for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. The righteous speaks about two different persons from the community, one who hangs out with bad people. Life is a business of walking, standing, sitting. His regular life consists of him engaged in different activities with a group of wicked people. Crime, drugs, pranks, gossiping, partying, all the works. Then there is a time when he stands with the sinners, maybe regular people, but they are not religious. They don't go to church. They have families, but they don't do the God thing. Or he sits in the company of mockers, a category of persons who just live. They don't care about life in a deeper sense. They have fun, they make money, they do their jobs, and they don't give much thought to an alternative life. The writer says that there is another person, the one who consciously decides to do the God thing, church, the Bible, praying, worshiping, charitable deeds, faithful to his wife, takes care of his family. He says that the first guy is not blessed, but the second one is. Why? What is the real difference? This is what is interesting. The second guy, the one who has an active relationship with God, is represented by a tree. But this tree, which is a fruit tree, is located somewhere. Whatever time of year you see this tree, it is prospering. It is living a good tree life. One season, the leaves are green and beautiful, and the next season, this tree produces some amazing fruit. This guy is living a life with God. God is the streams of water. God is there to provide water all year round, but the tree is active. The roots of the tree are positioned in such a way that there is this constant drawing of water from the streams to the roots and that water travels up to different parts of the tree. That is why the leaves are lush and green. That is why this fruit tree bears such juicy fruits at the right season. Nice. The other guy is not planted near to the streams, but it gets water every now and then, enough to get through the day. It grows as well. But what is interesting is that this tree is not prospering like the other one. It is there, and you may get a flower every now and then. You may get an ear, an ear of corn, but what you get is lots of dried leaves and stuff, and the tree looks weak, and after a while, it withers and dies. 
you're one of those trees. Can I tell you that the first tree, the first guy we talk about, the one that has an active relationship with God, that that guy is wise. Yes, he chooses to serve God in a real way. He reads and puts into action God's laws all the time. I'm sure he makes mistakes every now and then, but he knows God and he knows that when he messes up, he can confess his sins and God forgives him. That tree is by the streams of water. That man, that tree is not leaving God. That tree is not interested in relocation. Let it remain right beside the flowing streams. Its position by the stream determines purpose, fruitfulness, its future. The other guy goes about his business too. He may be wondering what life would be like if I live like the good tree guy. But sooner or later, he decides that that guy can do life his way and I'll do life my way. But it is not that simple. Remember the baby who grew up and died? You went to the funeral? Well, there were actually two babies. And they both grew up and went separate ways, lived separate lives. Years later, the first guy who has a relationship with God is doing well. When he dies, he doesn't perish. His judgment experience admits him to continue to prosper. He goes to live with God in heaven forever. The other guy, he also dies. But remember, he did not have a relationship with God. He was the wicked guy. He was a sinner guy. He was the guy who mocked God and all that stuff. The writer says that after a life of being blown in every different direction, that tree dies too. What is the outcome? That guy, just like that tree, perishes. That guy gets to spend eternity in the fire of hell. You, my friend, you still have a chance to do life by the river. That is the wise decision. The writer of this powerful psalm says, if you do that, you are blessed. 